wish you all a really blessed Christmas and a wonderful new year. This Chinese? Vietnamese? Korea? Korea. Korea. Just all Korea? Oh. Yeah, you look like Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Korea and what? Huh? Vietnamese? Vietnamese? Japanese. Laos, Thailand. Laos, Thailand. Japan. Japan? Cool. <laughs> he looked like Japanese. <laughs> and she looked like Korean, huh? <laughs> the, the blonde one over there. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, you know what? English, hey? Yeah, what to do international, huh? All this beautiful contact person. You know what? Uh, I was thinking maybe next time. Next time it would have been better if, if we have somebody to cook for you. You don't have to even cook, huh? Yeah? We have special hufa and cook all for you, but, you know, never mind, huh? We okay, huh? You're so happy to get out of the meditation hall for a while, huh? <laughs> Too much uh, sitting, right? <laughs> where from? Sweden. Uh, Sweden. Just tell me where you're from, quickly. T- this group today, where from? Sweden and then? Italy. Italy. Ah, bienvenido. And you? Chile. Chile, yes. Canada. Canada. They have this in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> What kind? What kind of makeup you put on? <laughs> Korea. Korea. Ah. America. America. Korea. Yeah, Korea. 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 Many Korea, huh? You. Finland. Finland. They have that in Finland. <laughs> okay, never mind. And you behind there? America. Uh, Sweden. Sweden. Yeah. Oh, together. Ah. Oh. I am from north. Do north. He's from south. Oh, middle. Middle. Oh, middle. Stockholm. Oh, Stockholm. Ah, oh, capitalist. Yes. <laughs> no, no, capital. Okay, where else? Uh, well, Sydney, Australia. Australia. Oh, they have those in Australia. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm too lazy to ask now. You come from all over the place just for the Christmas cake. <laughs> I don't want to ask anymore. Yeah. Anyway, it's a different group today, huh? You okay outside yesterday? Is warm enough? You have enough food? Yes. Food is okay? Yes. You find everything? Yes. Good, good. Uh, take care of yourself. I don't hear you coughing or anything this time. It's wonderful. When you go out in the cold, you, you wrap something quick, okay? Yeah. So you don't, you don't come direct from the heart and then cold, hot, cold. is no good, eh? I even put a heater in the toilet area. Yeah? Because it was very windy over there, you know, the curtain was blowing because I did not fix it well. So I fixed it and I put two or one, uh, um, two, uh, how do you say, heater there so you don't go straight into the cold and the wind was blowing into your face. Man, <sighs> what do they do with our mama, I'm telling you? <laughs> I'm getting old and you guys don't take care of me, I have to take care of you all the time. That's not fair. Huh? You enjoy? Yeah? Yes. Still? And meditate well? Yes. Good, yes. 
once you don't have to take care of all these uh, <laughs> unwelcome visitors in your house. Yeah? I mean, your place today you enjoy. Yeah? You come here enjoy. Yeah. Next time, if we have another next time, of course we will. Huh? And the bigger place, yeah. Yeah, I will arrange that people come specially just to cook for you ah, <laughs> and do everything else for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been doing that all the time for everybody. You know, the contact person. Yeah. I mean, it's just a contact person, but yeah, there are some work to do, right? You have to deal with some characters, <laughs> you know, <laughs> enlightened saints, yeah, <laughs> who are just crawling up to the third border <laughs> and thinking they are some big shot, huh? And then it's uh, very difficult to deal with some people sometimes, yeah? Convenient method is also not always convenient. Huh? Convenient method practitioner is not always convenient. Huh? They ask a lot of inconvenient questions. <laughs> yeah, so, so if one day we have that place that we are already signed, you know, we pay deposit, yeah? If the bureaucracy gone through, huh? paperwork gone through, we have that, yeah? And then we have bigger place, yeah? And then we will uh, uh, give more time so people with uh, restricted uh, country, you know, the visa, they still have them, some of them. You know, you know, like some African cannot come, yeah, because they're stuck in the jungle. Mm. Jungle bureaucracy. <laughs> it's another kind of jungle, yeah. So next time, if we have a chance, if I could know it long in advance, if I could be sure where I'd be, or we make a um, give a longer time for people to get visa, and then you have more of the big shot contact person coming all together. And then we can arrange people to cook, yeah, and to do the other guardian job, yeah, and the garbage job, you know, taking care of garbage and uh, cleaning up, yeah. So all you do is just uh, sit hmm, and enjoy for a change, okay? I'm sorry this time it's not well organized and you even have to cook yourself. I mean, cook for yourself. <laughs> because we... We don't have a big room here, and if I have more cooking, cook people coming and God coming, then you have no room for yourself. That's why you have to cook for yourself this time, yeah? Next time will be just holiday. Hmm? Okay? <laughs> that is for, to make up for all the cleaning and cooking you have done <laughs> every time, yeah? Every Sunday. <laughs> Okay, yesterday, you remember, we talked about uh, the Esthenes, not organization, but the Esthenes, who are practitioners, yeah? Spiritual practitioners, and their principle and uh, their initiation, uh, pre-initiation uh, process, it's just very much similar to us. Remember that? You don't have an earphone, but you understand English. Wonderful. Okay, good. I understand English? Oh, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to learn English, didn't I? Huh? Because we have so many languages, we can never master them all. So just English is easy, right? Even I can learn English, no? So you can, no? Even my dogs understand English. <laughs> my birds understand all the English I've spoken. Shame on you if you don't. Huh? They even speak English, the birds, you know? <laughs> How are you? You know? <laughs> they told me, you're beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, I mean, on time. I mean, a very appropriate occasion, and sometimes lousy, you know, so I scold them and say, I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, really. The dog don't say that, but he come to me and look at me with the <laughs> sad eyes, you know, puppy eyes and very pitiful eyes. <laughs> that spoke more than the language. But the birds, they can manage to do both, no? Yeah, when I don't come and, uh, you know, Sometimes give them snacks and checking out temperature and all that. If I'm too far, they say, come here, <laughs> come here, you, come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when the dogs are too noisy, either they bark with them, you know, like the African grey also, whoa, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the other say, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. And sometimes they ask themselves, are you Okay. And then I don't answer nothing. He say, yes. <laughs> they say, yes, himself. <laughs> Are you okay? And then no answer. Yes. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. Oh, they can talk all day. Beautiful. Yeah. And if you don't understand English, shame on you, huh? Okay. 
So we get back to the essence. Yesterday we uh, learned about the pre-initiation, seven vows, remember? Just similar to ours, yeah? Yeah. Almost identical, eh? Except the language uh, written maybe a little bit different, but it was we can make out that they are really same like us. And I'm sure they practice the same light and south method because it's mentioned everywhere, yeah. Anyway, I give you one at a time, eh? Okay? So today I tell you how they live. Okay? And according to the document that is written down in the Dead Sea Scroll, they have uh, discovered many things from the essence as well. Okay? And now we see uh, how do they live, okay? Their lifestyle. According to the uh, research about the essence, they say their teaching and their uh, influence are left marked everywhere in all kinds of uh, different religious. Uh, scripture and tradition, yeah? Uh, even Zoroastrian and in the Bible and uh, Zarathustra and and even in Adonic culture of uh, Phoenicians, of uh, Alexandrian school of philosophy of Egypt, yeah? Many, many um, religions has their trace. Okay, so now we are going to check out what do they do. You see, uh, mostly uh, this, um, all these documents are found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which they have unearthed, you know, not long ago, uh, some years ago, and they have found uh, these great teachings, yeah. And Jesus belonged to this order, yeah. All right, we all do. <laughs> From the remote ages of antiquity, a remarkable teaching has existed, which is universal in its application, and ageless in each wisdom, in its wisdom. Fragments of it are found in Sumerian hieroglyphs <laughs> and on ties and on stones dating back some eight or ten thousand years. Some of the symbols, such as for the sun, moon, air, water, and other natural forces, are from an even earlier age preceding the Catholicism that ended the plain stone scene period. How many thousands of years previous to that the teaching existed is unknown. But I'm sure it came from the beginning of mankind existed existence, right? Because whenever there is mankind there must be a teacher for them. Yeah? According to this research, this book to study and to practice the teaching of the essence is to reawaken within ourselves an intuitive knowledge that can solve our problems and the problems of the world. Wow, isn't that great? I wish everybody practiced the teaching of the essence. Yeah, we are, yeah, but not everybody else does. That's a pity, yeah, because it's such a treasure. Traces of the teachings have appeared in almost every country and religions. Yeah? Its fundamental principles were taught in ancient Persia, Egypt, India, Tibet, China, Palestine, Greeks, and many other countries. But it has been transmitted in its most pure form by the essence, that mysterious brotherhood which lived during the last two or three centuries before Christ the first century of the Christian era at the Dead Sea in Palestine and at Lake Marietis in Egypt. In Palestine and Syria, the members of the Brotherhood were known as Essenes and in Egypt as Therapeutae or Healers. Yeah, they take on different names, yeah? The esoteric part of their teaching is given in the tree of life, in the essence, communions with the angels, they call it. You know, like we meditate, they call it the communion with the angels. In a way it is, yeah? It's just more descriptive when you say communion with the angels, yeah? And when you say meditate, it's <laughs> they don't know what we meditate on. But if you say communion with the angels, then it's probably more descriptive and more clear, no? And the sevenfold peace, among others, 
the sevenfold piece I read to you yesterday, yeah? I mean the sevenfold vows, yeah? Okay. The exoteric or outer teaching appears in book one of the Essence Gospel of Peace. I read some of them to you, uh, maybe last retreat. And the recently discovered Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, recent mean several years back, no? Yeah. The origin of the Brotherhood is said to be unknown, of course, no? You don't even know when they exist or when they begin. And most people also don't know about us, but nowadays we have to make an uh, association, yeah? That's how people know about us. In the beginning, I didn't want any association, any organization, nothing at all. But I lived in Taiwan, and, you know, any country, you are forced, yeah? By law or, I don't know, by curiosity of the people, that you have to make yourself known as an os- association. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble, <laughs> yeah? So uh, some people believe that it comes from the Esnoch, or uh, Enoch, and claim, because uh, Enoch uh, claimed to be the founder of the Essenes. Uh, they, they claim that he was, yeah. Their communions with the angelic world have first been given to him, you know, Enoch, the founder of the Essenes. Organization, or supposed to be an organization. But I don't think, I didn't think they have an organization as such as we have now with all the bureaucracy, paper and all that. Probably just a community, yeah? A simple get-together, live together and uh, share together what they have, yeah? Yes. It would have been to us, for us also, a very good idea if we get together and stay together all together, you know, like a country or something, yeah? Uh, Which like uh, Prophet Mohammed, no? In a few days, in January... Yeah, January 10, it will be uh, the kind of New Year, huh? uh, a festival for the Muslim. It marked the day that the Prophet Muhammad went from Mecca to Medina to establish a Muslim country, an Islamic country, okay? Yes. He was driven. They were driven to they have to defend themselves and make themselves a country. Understand me? Yeah. And so, in a sense, perhaps the essences also have to form together in a group, you know? Or maybe in one area where they spread out their, their teaching in a similar situation, like what we do, but we are just more international, yeah? It would have been better if we also <laughs> gather all together in one place and make it like a country, but I don't even want to do that. Because uh, what for, huh? Anyway, yeah? We okay now. In every country now, most of the country, we have the freedom to practice what we believe, which is harmless to anyone and is beneficial to the whole world, to everyone anyway. And if the situation is not so bad, then we just stay where we are and uh, practice, yeah? Practice the spiritual way that we do, the way of love. And now... Mostly they gather together in some place like a community. Né? It's not like an official association, I don't think. Yeah. And uh, in those days, probably in some countries, it were easier for them to practice together. In some countries, maybe not. Yeah. So they do, what they did is they stay together in, in where there is more concentrate, just like in your area. Yeah, you are a contact person and other, uh, your brother and sister live nearby, yeah, around it. And you come together every Sunday to meditate, something like that. Or you stay together in one area, you know, just like we did in Meoli before, yeah, in Sihu, yeah, me and the, uh, the renunciates people. And that you can call that also similar to a community of the SNS, yeah? But I think... Um, it's also nice that you spread all over the world to to help the world also, huh? What if you all stay together with me and then nobody else know about us except ourselves? <laughs> yeah, that's also nice. Probably people would know about us more or less now and again and they will come some newcomer and all that. But it's uh, better to serve the world where you are, huh? It's not a coincidence that you've been sent to America 
or you try to get to America by a mean of refugees' boat or whatever that was, yeah? Or it's not a coincidence that you become a resident of Switzerland even though you are Vietnamese or Chinese or Korea. It's not a coincidence, yeah? The Providence placed you there for some purposes, yeah? And then you found out already, yeah? You are there to take care of those brother and sister over there in need, yeah? Even spiritually and materially as well, yeah? So you went there and you are there, so you help the poor people in that area, or you spread the teaching of the essence, <laughs> of our essence, yeah? Anyway, I see no difference at all. The theoretically speaking, no difference between the essence and us at all. The more I read, the more <laughs> I, I know what they were doing, exactly like what we are doing right now, okay? So history always repeats itself, yeah? Okay. So you practice Kuan Yin method and you stay in our way of life. You are in all religions' way of life, yeah? Because you read Hinduism and you read uh, Catholicism or Buddhism, they're the same, no? The theory is the same. What they do is the same, yeah? Just the experience is missing in some of the religious order, yeah? The experience is what every religion talking about, including the essence, yeah? They talk about communion with the angel, <laughs> yeah? See in the light, hear in the music, all that in this book, in the, the doctrine of the essence. Understand me? Just talking, okay? If we also have the experience of those things, that they have been talking about, then that is a complete ism, whatever you call that, right? And that's just, that's the only thing that difference between us and any others, any any group, huh? Some other group, <laughs> not any. Some group are doing the same, yeah, like we do. Now we come back to the the origin of where they came from and how they form the essence community. Uh, they call themselves brotherhood, huh? Others consider the name comes from Israel, the elects of the people, to whom Moses brought forth the communions at Mount Sinai, where they were revealed to him by the angelic word. Oh, of course, also, huh? It's the same. Anyway, doesn't matter where it comes from, but I'm sure Moses also teaching the same, that the, like the essence and like us. So there, therefore. Probably this teaching has been dated since the beginning of human existence anyway. But before that, before those, before these times, Moses' time or Enoch time, they don't have mean to record their stuff, yeah? They did not uh, have probably writing uh, ability, uh, writing uh, system, yeah? So therefore we probably lost some of this uh, record, yeah? But I'm sure it existed long before all the names that uh, are written in here. But whatever their origin, it is certain the essence existed for a very long time as a brotherhood, perhaps under other names in other lands. Brotherhood is like that, not necessarily only brother. Eh? We sister as well. The teaching appears in the Sen. Avesta of Zarathustra, who translated it into a way of life that was followed for thousands of years. Mm. It contains the fundamental concepts of Brahmanism, the Vedas and the Upanishads, and the yoga system of India sprang from the same sources, of course, but it depends on which yoga system. Eh? Yeah. The, the yoga system of uh, Shabda means the sound, yoga system. That is the one came from essence. Shabda means sound in uh, Sanskrit. Yeah? Shabda, yeah. In India they call this also, what we practice, they also call yoga. Hmm? Yoga means reunion. Yeah? <laughs> That's it. The u reunion with God. So they call it yoga. Yeah. But there are so many name, many systems also call yoga. So confusing people. But yoga will mean reunion, yeah? So if you're reunion with your own great self or with God, that is a yoga. And not uh, just exercise and not just breathing and not... You understand me? Yeah, okay. Not physical, hmm? Not much physical. Anyway, 
Even in meditation, sometimes I also teach you exercise, yeah? It's just to help to, you know, to revigorate yourself and just the healthy stuff and just to make you feel more relaxed to, to meditate or more at ease or more awakened, that's all. But that is not... That is not uh, uh, part of the so-called yoga, né? the reunion. It's just uh, exercise, okay? So the real yoga is the one we're doing without, without world, without action, né? the quaning meditation or the essence meditation or the communion with the angels, okay? Angels at that time signify heaven, heaven, you understand me? Uh, divine force. As therefore, a lack of world, I just say communication with the angels, because everybody knows angels. That means good one, yeah. That means heavenly abode. So they just say communication with the angels, just to make it simple, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps they were trying to avoid the word like communion with God. You know why? Because probably it would be labeled as blasphemy, yeah. You look at what they did to Jesus when he said he's one with God, that he's communion with God, yeah, in communion with God. You see, he's too straight. The essence, they don't say that. <laughs> but when he came out from them, he said, I am one with God. Why? He's just telling the truth. But nobody can take it. You see what I mean? Not many people can take it. And that's what happened to him, yeah? Hmm. Okay, is uh, the essence traits also can find in Buddha's a uh, teaching, because Buddha later gave forth essentially the same basic ideas, and his sacred Bodhi tree is correlated with the essence tree of life. In Tibet, the teaching once more found expression in the Tibetan will of life. That is according to the book research. They think that way, yeah? But this is only our theory, yeah? Ah. What the book cannot show you here is the essence of it, the essence of the essence. Yeah, <laughs> the name connotes some essence. Yeah, essence of the things, essence of yourself, essence of the divine, the essence of all things, the most important thing. Okay, so the Pythagoreans and the Stoics in ancient Greeks also follow the essence principles and much of their way of life. The same teaching was an element of the Adonic culture of the Phoenicians, of the Alessandrian school of philosophy of Egypt, I mentioned before, and contributed greatly to many branches of Western culture. Freemasonry, Gnosticism, and the Kabbalah of, and Christianity Jesus interpreted it in its most sublime and beautiful form in the seven beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount. What it means is the essence is in all religion. Of course, all religion also the essence. Yeah? All religion talk about the same thing, which is introduce the light, the sound, yeah, the essence of all beings, the essence of God. So, of course, in our religion you find it. I'm not surprised, no? Are you? Are you surprised? No. The Essenes lived on the shores of lakes and rivers, yeah, away from cities and towns, and practiced a communal way of life, sharing equally in everything. That's what we're doing, yeah? We don't just share with among ourselves, we share with outside people, yeah. They were mainly agriculturists, yeah, they have to be, and uh, up oriculturist, having a vast knowledge of crops, soil, and climatic condition, which enable them to grow a remarkable variety of fruits and vegetables in comparatively desert areas, and with a minimum of labor. They have to. Mm? They have to. Yeah, the more you practice, the more you'll be able to cope with environments, no? Whatever the harsh environment offer to you, you have to study, you have to find a way, and you use your wisdom also to survive, no? Mm. And that's what they did. They have to if they want to be in a community together, yeah? And be independent, yeah? Mm. 
apart from uh, practice spiritually and keep the moral standard, they also need to nourish their bodies, their family, yeah, or whatever, whoever with them. They live on the shores of lakes and rivers, yeah, of course. Huh? You need that. You need water, yeah, to drink, to bath, and to do agriculture. Yeah, they're so smart, né? We also love to live near lake and rivers, yeah? yeah. Not that we can find many. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays it's not so necessary, yeah? Although it's beautiful to live next to the lake, yeah, and next to the river. I still would love that. Even if we have abundance of water supply from the community system already, yeah. But it's not a necessity. It's just beautiful to live next to the lake and river. It just makes you feel nice. Calm. Ninety percent of our body are made up of water, so that's why we love water, huh? Yes. Yeah, we go to water wherever we can, huh? Yeah. They had no servants, uh-huh. <laughs> no slaves, and were said to have been the first people to condemn slavery. Yeah, of course. Yeah? They call themselves brother and sisters, no? Mm, yeah. Do you have slave in your meditation center? No. <laughs> are you sure? Yes. Good boy. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> if you have any, give me some. <laughs> I need some because to help me, you know, and I'm because I'm a slave of everybody. I need some extra slaves to help me <laughs> at home also, yeah? Hmm. They condemn slavery both in theory and practice. Yeah? They don't have rich and poor among them because in the community they share everything equally. They contributed together and they shared equally. Yeah. In Mali before, you know, in Sihu, when I first started, and we, we have a you know, community together with me, and we just we didn't have much money at that time anyway, so we put money in, our, in, in a box, yeah? <laughs> so anybody needs it, just take it and go out, buy shopping, or do whatever necessity for themselves. That's the spirit of community, yeah? If you stay together in one place, then you share everything, yeah? Oh, we also have small, small group like that uh, here and there huh? in our in, in our uh, association. Yeah, they they group sometimes. You know, if one person have a piece of land and and uh, you know cheap and easy, everybody go there and then they you go work outside a little bit. Or if they have money, they just put it together. Yeah, and now that you put it in the bank and you take interest and you eat from it <laughs> or something like that. It's also maybe a community of some kind, community of the bank. <laughs> and we eat the same. We share it all together, the same, you know. There's no difference between what I eat and what they eat. In fact, some, they eat more than what I eat. <laughs> I don't have time to eat. And they eat everything. Understand? Everything tastes good to them. And I eat just a few items, you know, simple. But I don't always like all kind of things, Yeah. I just like some things only. It's not like, okay, they don't give me things to eat, it's just that I select just a few items, you know? I don't eat what they all eat. They eat everything, they eat all. <laughs> and I eat just a few things. It doesn't mean that uh, they eat everything from me. It's not that. It's just that I don't eat what they all eat. Understand <laughs> me? Because they can eat all. <laughs> I don't understand why they could eat so much of such and such, you know, <laughs> like chocolate sweet and stuff like that. I hardly touch them, yeah, now and again. So it's, it's all, they eat them, and in the morning they eat bread, jams, and peanut butters, and chocolate butters, and cereals, and soya milk, and all kind of stuff, you know. I never touch those things. <laughs> but they're happy, yeah? I, I'm happy, you know? We, what I mean is we take whatever we want. There's no... No different between uh, what I have and what they don't have, yeah? It's the same. They are the one who buy shopping anyway, yeah? <laughs> so I'm just, uh, are they messy, you know? A la messy of them. <laughs> so it is, a, in a way, it's a community, you know, in my place, yeah? The dogs also eat the same, yeah? <laughs> the birds eat better, yeah? Because uh, uh, the birds eat, uh, they eat more healthy things than us, you know? I tell them also I have to eat some nuts and all that fruit, but they rarely eat any nuts and fruit. Probably they have it in the cereals already, yeah? But the birds, they eat all the, you know, healthy stuff. All kind of nuts, all kind of seeds, yeah? All kind of fruit, dry and fresh. 
If they don't have it in season, we give them dry, yeah, dry fruit. But alternately, all the time, like one day dry, you know, one day fresh, yeah, or maybe only dry only once or twice a week, and the rest are fresh fruit, yeah, and fresh vegetable. Mm. And dogs eat the same stuff, yeah. Huh? Mm. So actually, in our community, in my community, everybody's better off than the boss. <laughs> you know, like some nuts are very expensive, huh? Uh, the the bird trainers in other places that I know, they just give them now and again for treat, treat to to do the tricks, you know, to train them. But uh, in my house, they eat it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, <laughs> they love it, so we give it to them. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> I don't care to train them any tricks anymore. As long as they're happy, it's fine. They train themselves. They do all kind of stuff by themselves. Yeah, yes. Even if I, I train them tricks, I don't have time to even enjoy it anymore. <laughs> I used to do it, you know, train them all kind of stuff, yeah. But it's okay now. They're fine. They're fine. Yeah. We do different things now. It's a different time. You do different things, yeah? Different fast in your life. You do different stuff. You don't always stay in the same place and do the same thing. Yeah. There's no rich and no poor among them, there, yeah? Because... The difference between rich and poor is a deviation from the law, from the universal law, they mean. They mean you should share equally uh, what heaven gives to you. That's what it is. That's what they mean by the law. Yeah? Okay, the universal law. The law of love. The law of equality. Yeah. So they establish their own economic system. Yeah. Based wholly on the law. Yeah? The above mentioned universal law and show that all men's food and material need can be attained without struggle through knowing the law. Yeah? Knowing the law is not only the law of, of the physical, but the law of the inner wisdom and love. Yeah? Once you know the inside law, you act just naturally uh, in a beneficial way to everyone and yourself. You will not want to hoard or keep anything just for your own benefit, yeah? So that is the natural law. You come to know the law by practicing spiritual uh, wisdom, yeah? Spiritual love. It just comes out naturally, yeah? <laughs> Once you know inside that everyone is your brother and sister, have the same spiritual bloodline, how would you want to let him have less than what you have? How would you let him suffer from... Hunger and thirst while you are feeding yourself, stuff to fall. You understand me? You will just naturally say, here, come, brother, eat something. Yeah, drink this, yeah. Nah, take what I have, yeah. Just be like me, no? It's just a natural reaction. Once a person refilled himself with the universal love, which is what we are anyway, yeah. Once you reclaim this compassion and love, we just act like a loving person. Or an angel, yeah, we call it, or a saint, okay. Now, they spend much time studying both of the ancient writings and spiritual branches of learning, different school of thought, yeah? Just like, okay, remember now? I read you sometime Rumi, yeah, Muslim stuff, Muslim scripture and doctrine. Sometimes I read to you the Bible. Sometimes I tell you the Buddhist scriptures. Sometimes, and now the essence, <laughs> for example, yeah? Because we all know it's all the same. Yes. You don't, in fact, need to know all this about the essence or the Hinduism or Buddhism that I told you. But uh, it's nice to know, that's all. It's not really a necessity. Once you practice Kuan Yin Method, it's cool already. Yeah? You know everything there is necessary to know. Because our requirements are few. Yeah? <laughs> we are contented. So they also do something uh, in the learning in the physical uh, aspect, like, you know, study, education, yeah? Um, probably something, math or any simple, some some stuff that you need, yeah? In this world to survive, yeah? You have to know some skill, yeah? Some basic uh, knowledge, maybe read and write, stuff like that, yes. And they also learn uh, healing and astrology and the uh, astronomy. Astronomy is not astrology, is it? What is it? It's like the science where you know where the planets are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The planetary movement in the sky. I guess they have to know that so that they uh, they can tell the weather, yeah? 
or the effect on the planet. Yeah, it's, it, it, it does affect the planet. When the moon rises, you know, the water in the sea is a different level. When the moon wanes, the water in the sea is different. You know, the ebb and lows of the water. If they live near the water, maybe they should know all that also, no? And also interesting to study the stars, no? The planetary movement, no? It's just like what we do now. We also sometimes look at Mars, you know, at the Christmas day is the brightest, <laughs> for example. It's just for fun, why not, yeah? And mostly we look inside anyway, yeah. But at that time, they do need, huh? They do need all this knowledge, yeah, for agriculture, for just uh, to probably just to study interesting stuff in the universe, physical aspect, huh? Okay, now. They were said to be the heir, heirs of uh, Chardin and Persian astronomy and the Egyptian art of healing. Yeah. Healing here means from herbs, yeah, medicinal properties that abound in the desert or in wherever they lived before. They were adept in prophecy for which they prepare by prolonged fasting. If you want to know the future... <laughs> You can fast. <laughs> That's what it means. Or sometimes they need to know some certain things, yeah? That's why some people ask me before, you know, if I know all my, uh, if I could know all the past lives of myself or everybody else. Uh, I say, yes, I could, but it's tiring, you know? It's like reading many books. Because you have to go back many past lives and read in the stuff in the library of the second world. Even reading fast or not fast is the same. You have to also read, yeah? And all the stuff of the past life sometimes is tiring, yeah? And the thing of the future or whatever happened, will happen, que sera, sera, who cares, yeah? <laughs> if you try to avoid it, it might happen another day, yeah? Or double, pay interest, or whatever, yeah? Whatever, <laughs> whatever happened, happened, no? What do you think, yeah? Okay, I have learned to resign. To the, you know, <laughs> destiny. <laughs> yes. The best to avoid anything in the future and to erase the bad past is just to meditate. Huh? Quanning the sound, the light, erase everything and brighten up everything and minimize everything that is unfavorable to you that we know already. Yeah? So we make it simple. Yes. But uh, in those times, Perhaps these essence people, they also need to know a little bit more skill, yeah? Probably just to win the heart of the people around or to survive, yeah? yeah. Or maybe they just learn it as an interest, as a hobby, yeah? Who knows? Yes. But the art of healing means you have to know all the medicine, yeah? The herbs that is beneficial to your body and maybe your mind so that you you can sit and meditate better, yeah? For example, if you are hypertype already, please don't drink coffee and tea before you sit for meditation. <laughs> and you go <laughs> 120 miles an hour, you know? You might get a ticket from the police <laughs> by sitting. <laughs> so if you know that you are very uh, sluggish type, you know, and tired, you know, easily during meditation, then maybe you would like to drink the herb or tea, <laughs> and then you can be a little bit more awake. That's it, yeah? It's just one of those things that everybody should know. Eh? And, you know, like a tea, mint tea will clean you, for example, like that. Eh? Or a thyme tea will calm you, yeah, something like that. Uh, this is a kind of herbal medicine that in the old time is not plentifully available everywhere, but you have to go to certain places, to certain people who study about it to get these healing herbs. Understand me? Yeah? Mm. Now that you just go to supermarket and get any box. <laughs> they even say it on the box for you. Like, Nui Kham means calming for the night. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> uh, tea without tea in. Yeah? And uh, tea for flu. Sometimes you have like uh, different herbs for uh, cleansing the la la bladder or uh, cure the stomach ache or cure constipation or whatever that is. You understand me? These are the art of healing that the essence had learned. And they need it, right? 
for themselves and to help people around. In a way, they're just like simple doctors, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to help yourself and others because maybe in their community, sometimes they need it also, eh? They need to know all this if they want to be independent to begin with, yeah? And if other people around them need to help, then they also help. In that case, they are at peace with the community around them, the extra community that don't belong to the SNS, yeah? But they need all that. You understand me? To help people and also to win friendship. So, just now we were talking about that if they want to do some prophecy, I mean, predicting something in the future, or maybe knowing the past to, to predict the future, they have to do a prolonged fasting, fasting for many days. What do they do? They don't just fast. They just tell people that they're fasting. But in fact, they sit in meditation for a long, uninterrupted time so that they can look back many lifetimes and look back into many lifetimes, uh, look back many lifetimes in the past and look forward into many lifetimes in the future. Yeah, The event that might happen to certain individuals or countries or communities. Yeah, okay? Mm. So that is a very hard work. You understand me? Not just sit there, but don't eat, don't drink, don't be disturbed, don't be distracted. Yeah? Lock yourself in a room, meditate, and something like that. I do not advise you to do it. If you want to know the weather, just look on SMTV. (laughs) They always say, tomorrow, what temperature? And if you don't trust SMTV or they don't show enough, then you look on other channels, yeah? They always predict the weather very well. I am not too sure about it because there are always some disaster up to now that they don't even know. Yeah, and people suffer a lot. So maybe, maybe they should learn the art. You know, the weather forecaster should learn the art of long fasting and meditation to, to predict a, a more accurate, you know, weather forecast. Yeah. And uh, of course, they learn the art of healing also because they have. Uh, they have animals, ne? For agriculture, or they have pets, for example. They have to cure themselves, yeah? They don't, probably, they don't want to ask outside people to come in and touch them or touch their pets or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, uh, as you know very well, sometimes we are practitioners. We are very sensitive to some less pure energy that enter our house or touch our stuff or touch our body, yeah? We feel different, yeah. We feel a little more burden heavy sometimes, yeah. It depends on who touches us. If that person is a higher level than ourselves and touches us, then we feel elated, yeah. Of course, <laughs> we feel happy. <laughs> but if that person is a lower consciousness, heavier energy, then we would feel a burden. Nah, huh? you understand me. So the essence, in a sense, if they stay together with the community, they must to know all there is to know to be independent, to be less in reliance on others' external um, environment or external, I mean, energy, external people, yeah? So they know everything. They have to be the giver also, ne? So people around them, if they're sick or something, they probably come to the essence for healing, and they can heal them better, of course, ne? Not just by herbs, but by their purified energies, by their divine contact, yeah? So they would help people a lot, and the beasts and the animals and the pets, whoever, yeah? All right. So it's not that they they specialize in healing, yeah, or astronomy or stuff like that, but they, it's just a necessity of the time. Hmm? Okay. And they live a simple... Now we come to how they live their life now. They live a very simple and regular life. They rise each day before the sunrise. They study and commune with the forces of nature. And that's what they say, another one, yeah? Communion with the angel, communion with the force of nature, yeah? And we say we communicate with God, yeah, with the divine. It's the same stuff, yeah? I don't know why they didn't say communicate with God. All this time, just with angels, (laughs) uh, with a natural force, (laughs) they dare not say God, I guess. Yes, because, you know, the human nature, eh? even now, people find it difficult to believe that somebody is in direct communion with God. Do you understand me? 
find it difficult. The thing is, only ancient people can do it. I don't know what's the difference between ancient people than us. They also have the nose, you know, right in the middle, two eyes here and two ears. Maybe one of them have one or two ear, <laughs> uh, one eye less or something. But uh, most uh, most of them look exactly like same like us, no? And they eat uh, mostly the same stuff, yeah. And they do similar thing all the time, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what the difference, okay? Even if we say, okay, we are not as high as Jesus or Buddha, fine, but we can be the disciples, right? So the disciples of Jesus and Buddha can communicate with heaven. But why cannot us? You see what I mean? Okay, we just say we are the disciples, yeah? The lineage must have been continued all this time, yeah? If they believe Jesus or Buddha come to save the world, then they must have left something for somebody. And it w- would have been continued all this time. And we could be one of the disciples, yeah? And if the disciples of those times have uh, uh, seen the God, have seen the Buddha's land and see light and hear sound and hear music of the sphere, why not us? Yeah? Okay? I am a very logical person. <laughs> okay, now, they bathe in cold water as a ritual and don't in white garment. Oh, Cold water, eh? Did you try here? <laughs> At the temperature below zero? <laughs> no. They don't bath the whole thing in cold water, of course. What they mean probably is just uh, ablution, yeah? Like, uh, remember at the time of initiation, I told you to wash yourself in, in cold water, cool water, eh? Or if you are sleepy, you splash yourself with cold water so you'll be awakened, yeah? And take a little walk to freshen yourself before you sit and meditate in the morning. Yeah? Just a necessary ablution. Yeah? Oh, please don't listen to this and then go bath yourself <laughs> in the cold water. I'm not responsible. <laughs> if you lay down outside there like an ice cream. <laughs> they don't have white garments. Okay, fine. The white garments, why, why the white garments? Because it's easier to see if it's clean or not. See what I mean? Number one is uh, symbolize the purity, the purification, yeah, the purity of the soul, yeah. Number two, so that everybody knows that he's clean, he's been washed, yeah. Even if he has been handling manure or something in the field, because they do agriculture, see. So after all day they work in the field, maybe they are dirty, you know and uh, smell that with the fertilizer and earth outside and or contact with something that is uh, unclean. So, of course, they know that they know all there is to know about hygiene, yeah? about medical and about the effect of everything. Of course, so they clean themselves with cold water to stay awake, yeah? Face and hand, perhaps. Yeah, that's the only place that get dirty or feet, yeah? The whole body has been covered by clothes anyway, yeah? So maybe they also clean, wipe up, just like the way we do now, yeah, because we are too many people. We don't have time to stand in queue in the bathroom, and we don't have any anyway. <laughs> so you just go quickly to the toilet and clean yourself, you know, with the simple wiping, dry cleaning system, and you can meditate, understand me? And cold water is just to wake you up, yeah, to keep you fresh, yeah, anyway. So, and they don't the white garments, just to simplify you know, just to cover also the dirty clothes that probably they have been working in the field with. You understand me? Yeah, change into the nice and clean clothes. Because let's face it, who would like to sit next to a sweaty, stinking guy? <laughs> I don't know if they have invented deodorant at that time. <laughs> so this is just simple hygiene, you know. It's not a ritual or anything. It's just that a must, yeah? It's a must in a community where you live with a lot of people and sit together in a room like this to meditate, yeah, you need to feel and to smell clean for everybody else, yeah, okay? After their daily labor in the fields and vineyards, they partook of their meals in silence, preceding and ending them with prayer. Yeah, that's what we should do. That's what I told you to do all the time, yeah? But you do it or not, I'm not sure. Yeah. (laughs) Some just, you know, I noticed some people, you know, attendant come to my house and I cook something for them. Yeah? They don't even give thanks to me. And I just sit down. Oh, nice. Yum, 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 <laughs> yum. They, they 
have no communion with the divine, a communion immediately with the food. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to cheat them gently. Hey, give thanks to God first, huh? <laughs> at least to God and not to the cook, but not to me, but at least to somebody. <laughs> uh, actually, when I thank, I thank everybody, yeah? I thank uh, not only God the Most High, but I thank all the angels, all the agricultural God, the rain God, the sun God, yeah, and uh, plants God, and all the humans God, you know, the angels that cultivate the field, that give you this beautiful food. Understand me? Heaven and human as well. So I thank them all, yeah? Ah, uh, okay, they proceed, and, you know, before they eat, they pray, you see? Thank God and all that, and pray and bless the food, and after they eat, they also thank God, yeah? Okay, that's good, that's the way you should do it. Remember, okay, huh? Even if I don't say it, they say it here, you know it, okay? Now listen to them, it's a good one. <laughs> so, uh, in their profound respect for all living things, they never touch flesh food. They don't eat meat, see that? I hope all the essences in this lifetime also read this and don't eat meat. Nor did they drink fermented liquid, I mean no alcohol. See that? Yes. Their evenings were devoted to study and communion with the heavenly forces. Again, no God, just <laughs> heavenly forces. I don't think they dare to write it even or tell everybody else what they're doing. Yeah? Just like you go outside, you also say something less, right? You know, you minimize the effect. <laughs> but sometimes we are very direct, and it's all okay to, who cares, yeah? Nowadays we're more free, huh? We can make use of our religious freedom, I mean, belief freedom. We are not a religion anyway, yeah? We are just communicating with God, <laughs> I said, or Buddha, or heavenly force, or, yeah, divine, yeah. So, evening was the beginning of their day, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, it's not the, the time that they work in the field, that is they call their day. It's the evening and the night, that is the beginning of their day. Huh? huh? How many days you begin here already, you see? <laughs> but in the retreat we begin all day, all night, yeah? yeah. But see, they also meditate in the night. You see that? Here is the proof. Evening was the beginning of their day and their Sabbath or holy day began on Friday evening. Ah, uh, of course, no? <laughs> we can, no? <laughs> we are free, we gather together and meditate. See that? They do the same. The first day of their week, yeah, that is supposed to be their first day of the week, Friday, yeah. And evening is supposed to be the beginning of their day, see? Everything important, they know, see? Evening, begin to meditate all night, yeah? And uh, Friday is beginning of their week. That is a it doesn't mean a weekday, it's just Friday until Sunday, that is their week. It's just their most important days of the week, so they call that the week. That's the only important week, yeah? So they begin to meditate then, from Friday to Sunday. Yeah, they don't work then. Hmm. Wow, see, we discover a lot of things that the essence is doing, which is exactly like what we're doing, <laughs> and what everyone else would do, you know, in our religions, if they do have the light and south, but because uh, many of them don't have it, so they just do the ritual, yeah? Singing, reading books, that's it. Not much of a communion with God. These days, yeah, in the week, you know, from Friday on, this day was given to study, yeah? Discussion and entertaining of visitors and the playing of certain musical instruments, relics of which have been discovered. Yeah, of course. We can, huh? They celebrate, and sometimes they make performance, yeah? And they receive people. You know, we can, yeah? Sometimes people come to visit our center and we tell them, discuss with them the, the nature of meditation, yeah? Telling them about their religious um, doctrine that they believe in, but uh, no <laughs> experience from it. Just the advertisement of the apple. So we give them also the apple if they want. See what I mean? Yeah. So that is exactly like what we're doing, no? Yes or no? Yes. People have uh, uh, even discovered the instrument that the asana used during their Sabbath day, yeah, during the weekend. Yeah. That's what it says in here, okay. Their way of life 
enable them to live to advanced age of 120 years or more, you know, more than that even. And they were said to have marvelous strength and endurance. In all their activities, they express creative love. Yeah. Do you have them? Yes, yeah. yeah, you have, huh? Yes. <laughs> you have them or not? Yes. Because when you say yes, I think maybe you don't have. <laughs> you just say, e- yes. <laughs> is it yes or is it yes? <laughs> Gosh, you are comedians by birth. <laughs> wow, let's hope that we live until 120 and more. <laughs> oh, their life is different. You see, in the old time, they're less stressed, yeah? No traffic jam to rust, huh? Eh? You're not going anywhere. <laughs> you can't. You can, but it's not like this, yeah? And then uh, you don't have television too much, you know, not even SMTV to watch. Eh? Supreme Master Television also wasn't there. So they have a lot of time, see? And they don't go out work, the, this community, yeah? Mostly they live together in the communities. Uh, probably this uh, renunciate, you know, monkhood place. And the other disciples also scattered everywhere, no? Not possible that all of them can be able to come and stay with this essence uh, community, yeah? These are probably reserved for those who have time, yeah? Who have mean, yeah? And you uh, have no ties with family, you know, or relatives, something like that. Or has no business or has no more ambition. You just want to die. Yeah, <laughs> go there, waiting to die. But then they don't die. They live until 120. <laughs> <laughs> the less you worry about survival, the more you survive, no? <laughs> 120. Oh, of course, huh? It's such a clean life they live, no? Eh? And they have all the knowledge of herbal medicine. I mean, vitamins and the essential supplements of, of, uh, of uh, the body. And then they meditate so much and they eat from their own produce, you know, which is clean and pure and organic, yeah? And they have the blessing power in the food when they're planting and they bless the food when they're eating and after uh, eating they even bless the food. How would they not live long? Yeah. They don't have a hectic life, see? They just take it. Easy like that. They plant their food and they, they, they watch them grow. What a pleasure, yeah? It's nice to have uh, agriculture um, as a profession. In fact, the research, I told you that the, one of the most happiest marriage, one of the top five happy marriage is farmers' marriage. Yes, yes. I mean, they, they work together with the labor of their hands, yeah? Uh, with the sweat of their brows, and they grow things together, watch them grow together, and eat them together, you know. How can they not be happy? Eh? Yeah. Uh, in the psychological sense, people say that uh, when two people um, worrying about the same things, they love each other. When two people want the same thing, they hate each other. <laughs> because each one expects the other to provide. <laughs> but when they both worry about the same thing, that means they put all their collaboration and strength and spirit and heart together to, to solve the problem. So, of course, they're happy together, no? So the farmers, they have to worry about the same thing all the time, no? Both of them have to buy, uh, check out what the seed is good for the next season and make sure that uh, water is enough and enough sun, yeah? And enough uh, work on the field, take out the weeds and all that, for example. They worry the same thing every day because they produce. It's their lives together, yeah? It's not the his or her, it's ours. You see what I mean? Our field, our crop, yeah? our success, yeah. So, of course, psychologically speaking, logically speaking, they must be happy, no? Yes. Mm. yes. yes. <laughs> they sent out healers and teachers from the brotherhoods, amongst whom were Elijah, John the Baptist, John the Beloved, and the great Essen Master. Who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Membership in the brotherhood was attainable only after probationary period of a year. 
and three years of initiatory work, four years together for apprenticeship to be the member, probably just in that community, yeah, to be a monk, perhaps, yeah, to be a renunciate, yeah, to live in the community. But if a normal disciple, probably, it takes just a year of, uh, you know, uh, vegetarian and all that, you know. And nowadays, because of the time and the, the people consciousness, so I reduce it into two months already. From twelve months become two months. <laughs> My God! And still, somebody has to copy all the lecture and give it to him for free, <laughs> for somebody who can't even bother to do it. My God! Don't make it too cheap, okay? Maybe in the beginning you help them, but they have to walk on their own feet, nah? If they don't want my teaching, don't force it upon them. Tell them you don't deserve it. <laughs> if you want it, you find a way to get it. And if you don't want it, and okay, that's your choice, yeah? In the beginning, of course, you help them to understand, yeah? But later, if they know already, yeah, they have to do it themselves, okay? No need to spoil people rotten like that. Nah? They become dependent on you. And dependence is, dependency is never good for anybody. <sighs> yeah, I'm very frustrated sometimes myself even because I have to depend on many people for different stuff. Yeah, Because um, it's okay if you're far away, but if you're nearby, and sometimes dependency is, can breed frustration, you understand me? Because the other person is not you. And when you tell them to do something, they don't always do it the way you want. And then you have to tell it again, again and again. Yeah? Yeah. Because uh, sometimes one person cannot do everything, then it's okay. But if whatever you can do, you do it yourself. It's the best. Okay? Yes. Don't make a habit into relying on anybody else. It's, it's very bad for you. But you don't use up enough your intelligence. And then it will be rotten also. And you give all the power to the person who do it for you because he knows better and better all the time. <laughs> and you know less and less all the time. The more they know, the more they're better than you. The less you know, the more you are dependent. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yes. No good. Oh, my God, it's not just that. Not just one year probation and three years of, uh, you know, uh, internship, but followed by seven more years before being admitted to the full inner teaching. Wow, now you tell me. No wonder you are so difficult to handle. I give you after two, three months or immediately. <sighs> All these years I really have gray hair, you know. But the time is different, you know. Yeah, people are not doing it. If I uh, put this condition now, I think nobody sit here at all. <laughs> after seven years, I sit here all by myself. <laughs> After one year already, yeah. <laughs> After one year, I don't need to buy any uh, meditation hall, nothing. <laughs> that, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I've been worrying and uh, looking from one place to another to buy a meditation hall and all that. Oh, why bother? Just, just give them one year trial, yeah. <laughs> and then I have all the room for myself. <laughs> Oh, I don't need any room. I just go live in a trailer park, yeah? Or in a tent somewhere, anywhere, any camping ground. Hmm? Wow, what a good idea. <laughs> no, actually, because this SNS communities were known for their lawyer adherents. There's no known case of expulsion. Yeah, no known case in this community at all. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> I'm surprised that I, they even have members at all. <laughs> How many years? That eleven years before they were admitted to inner teaching. That means the initiation. Probably when they came first came, they probably just teach them like healing, you know, herbal knowledge or plow the field, yeah, <laughs> for the older monk, yeah. Just go out and <laughs> do, you know, plant vegetable. Yeah, do the labor work. In the old time, it's like that. Everywhere too. In the Zen tradition, also like that. Ne? The master make the disciple work his butt out for many years <laughs> before he gives him anything. Well, that is more sure, you know. But I don't know how it works. I think all people go to hell before they get anything. Everybody else, I mean, you know. 
And look at how Mila, Mila Ruba has to work for how many years, you know, with bleeding uh, back and blistering hands and, yeah, and pain in the joint, every, everything for many years and until his master gave him something, yeah. <laughs> Even uh, his uh, wife feels sorry for Mila Ruba and send him somewhere else, you know, from the cheap disciple or some probably meditation center to get a sneaky initiation, but he has no experience. The master did not allow it. Yeah? So they all know, so, oh, maybe our, our chief guru doesn't allow it. That's why you don't have experience. For sure it was. <laughs> not maybe. <laughs> it's definite. Yeah? Okay. In the old time, uh, master are hard to crack, huh? Yeah. Lucky we're not born in those times, huh? <laughs> Lucky you and I, huh? Yes. Yeah. My God, that's 11 years long, eh? If you live that long, lucky you. (laughs) (laughs) Records of the essence way of life have come down to us from the writings of their contemporaries. Yes, that's how they know. That's how we know now, okay? Uh, Fliney, the Romaine naturalist. Philo, the Alexandrian philosopher. Josephus, the Roman historian, these are the people who wrote the records of the way of life of the essence. Yeah? Okay. Solanius and others, etc., spoke of them variously as a race by themselves, more remarkable than any other in the world. Of course they are. They were. Yeah? Even so lousy as you are, I think you are already very remarkable in the world. <laughs> Not to talk about them, you know, so strict and so screening, yeah? But you can make it up, okay? You can make it up. You can strive. And now you know the way, you just walk on and you'll be just like them, okay? You are more or less already. Some of you, some are not. Some are more, some are less. <laughs> but more or less, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Put together is more or less. <laughs> wow. So these philosophers of those times, the famous one, have spoken highly of them, yeah, of the essence communities. The oldest of the initiates receiving their teaching from Central Asia, that's what they wrote, eh? these philosophers above mentioned, they wrote like that. The oldest of the initiates receiving their teaching from Central Asia, yeah, probably India, yeah, China, teaching perpetuated through an immense space of ages, constant and unalterable holiness. Yes, even until this day, we have the same quality, yeah? Because the teaching is the same. The light and sound of heaven never change. God quality never change. Whoever gets in touch with God's quality would not change. Right? I will change only for the better, but not change in the way of the quality as as the older people, as the ancient people, yeah, as the essence people, or whatever people who has been in touch with the divine power since the time of the human existence. So some of the outer teaching is preserved. They do know outer and inner teaching. Thank God for this. Well, some people who wrote this must have been also enlightened somewhat. Some of the outer teaching is preserved in Aramaic texts in the Vatican in Rome. Some in Slavic texts was found in the possession of the Habsburgs in Austria and said to have been brought out of Asia in the 13th century by Nestorian priests fleeing the hordes of Genghis Khan. Echoes of the teaching exist today in many forms, in certain rituals of the Masonic order, in the symbol of the seven-branch candlestick, in the greeting, peace be with you, from the time of Moses, and even in the seven days of the week, which have long since lost their original spiritual meaning. Yeah, what a pity. Yeah? What a pity. So the seven days of the week begin with the essence somewhere, eh? sometime, long ago. 
from its uh, antiquity, its persistence through the ages, it is evident. The teaching could not have been the concept of any individual or any people, but is the interpretation by a succession of great teachers, the interpretation of the law of the universe. The basic law, eternal and unchanging, as the stars in their courses, the same now as two or ten thousand years ago, and as applicable today as then. The teaching explain the universal law, show how man's deviation from it are the cause of all his troubles, and gives the method by which he can find his way out of his dilemma. I mean, if you know the law, if you have a method to get in touch with this universal law, then your troubles will be less and less. All right, that is finish the section, the session and the section of how the essence lived their life in the ancient time. Okay. Thank you. Now, do we want to rest? No. Yes. Okay. You know what? I continue reading the essence. Yeah? Yes. yes. Maybe choke later. Okay? Yes. Are, you, are you want joke now, really? No. no. Oh, you can have a wish and a choice. Joke or essence? Essence. Okay. Really? Yes. Honestly? Yes. <laughs> Truly? Yes. <laughs> cool. Okay. Now, okay, the essence. Uh, you see the Bible, in the Bible, there is a, a, a section called the Revelation. Yeah? Do you know? No. Yes? <laughs> yes? Yes or no? No. Man! <laughs> what have you been reading all this time? The Christians. Oh, shame on the Christian, like you are. Okay, now. <laughs> At least the outside people, they know the Bible. Maybe. <laughs> In the essence document, they also talk about the revelation. So, I'm not sure if the Bible's revelation come from the essence, or the essence revelation come from the Bible. Oh, but uh, I don't know. Actually, this has uh, been discovered in a Dead Sea Scroll, you know, the last Dead Sea Scroll, and it's been more ancient even, yeah? Or at least the contemporary time of Jesus, yeah. Some of it contemporary, some of it probably older, okay. So now, in the essence record, the disciples or the practitioners of that uh, community, of that group, has also vision, inner vision, yeah? A lot of vision, of course, yeah? Big deal vision, yeah. But, uh, and also uh, the vision is even revealed up to our time even, you know, the prediction. That's why probably when they want to do the prophecy, they go in a long fasting period and meditate uninterrupted. Probably in those periods, one of them or a few of them have visions, yeah? And they wrote it down here, many visions because of the, they foresee the calamity of humanity. Understand me? Yes. Up to present day even, when I read it, it sounds very much like us, like our period of time in some areas of the world, yeah? The calamity, the disaster. So I don't go so far out like that to read it all to you, but I read some, okay? Yes. Mm, I read some uh, better one. I mean, less negative. Okay. Some are also very positive too. But uh, you know it already. You have all the vision, just like what they have in here. Maybe I'll read you another day, okay? Now I want to read you some of this, and then I can escape. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because if I read all this, it will take too long. <laughs> Besides, this is somebody else's experience, yeah? Never mind. Maybe we can know it one day, another day to compare, yeah? Okay, now I read you part of it, all right? I selected it last night. While you were sleeping in here, <laughs> I had to read all night. This is one part.
part of the experience of the practitioner of the essence at that time. It says here, And I saw heaven open and beheld a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, you know, the Master, the Messenger. And in righteousness he doth judge. I mean, this person, the holy being that he saw in heaven here, is a very righteous person, holy and true, okay? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he was cloaked in blazing light. He doesn't wear clothes, he wears light. Yeah, blazing light. And his feet were bare, and his name is called the Word of God. Quan Yin, huh? Yeah, the Word of God. The melody called the Word of God. The person is called the Word of God even. And the Holy Brotherhood follow him upon white horses. I guess these are the cars that you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> the white colored cars. We have only white cars up to now, in my house, mostly. Cloth in fine linen, white and clean. That's similar to the brotherhood, no? Actually, the clothes normally we should wear is like a gap, you know? Like those that Muslim people wear, or the clergy in the Catholic, or the Buddhists they wear. It's a loose outfit, see? Easier to meditate. That's why I love to wear these things so much, you know, very loose and simple, yeah? Yeah, I like to wear this thing because it's very easy. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? At home I only wear this day and night. Because all you need is just uh, sit and meditate or sleep. Uh, no need to wear any clothes at that time. <laughs> no, for me, huh? don't say that master do that and then go home and do that. Then. <laughs> And you don't have the habit, and when somebody call you and, and the doorbell ring, and you just run out and answer the doorbell, and then you might find the milkman drop dead in your doorstep. <laughs> okay, huh? Yeah. No, it's just uh, when you have no clothes, it's easier movement. Yeah. No wonder some of the yogis in India they don't, some of them don't wear any clothes. Yeah. It's just a hindrance also, you know? It's a beauty maybe to look at for fashion or for a special occasion for the eyes of human. It's not the imitation of anybody that make you become that body, okay? Yeah. It's the inside, all right? Okay, where were we? Oh, we talk about the Word of God, nah? And His name is called the Word of God. And the Holy Brotherhoods follow Him upon white horses, cloth in fine linen, white and clean, and they enter the eternal, infinite garden. It's a parable speaking, huh? You cannot describe in a vision and heaven by human language, actually. Yeah, You know that yourself, yeah? Sometimes you blah, 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 you talk about it, but you feel frustrated. <laughs> you cannot describe. Just see, oh, very big. Bright light. <laughs> but how bright, you know? How can you imagine a bright light but that somebody else don't see? You know what I mean? Only you who knows it. And you describe oh, beautiful mountain, beautiful garden, beautiful this and that. But you feel like you never say enough because the vision inside is so glorious and the language is so poor. Yeah? Hmm. In whose midst stood the true of light. Yeah? They enter the garden, infinite garden, in whose midst stood the tree of life, the tree of life that they were talking about in the Bible. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the rain-washed naked thongs came before them. These are the people who probably has not done well, you see? So instead of cloth themselves in light, yeah, like the words of God here, yeah, and uh, the brotherhood, they been rain-washed and naked. Mm. And they came in throngs, you know, in queue. Yeah, they come before them. Probably is the date of judgment, yeah? They probably came before uh, the judgment. 
Okay. They came before them, trembling to receive the judgment. For their sins were many. What kind of sin they have here? And they had defied the earth. Wow. Yeah, they had destroyed the creatures of the land. The creatures of the land they destroyed. So the animals, you mean? Okay. They have destroyed they had destroyed the creatures of the land and sea the fishes. See that? See that? What kind of creature of land and sea? Can only be animals and fishes, right? And shrimps and all they they're off. Yes. Poison the ground, foul the air. Wow, all this emission of gas. Yeah? C E O. They poison the ground. These are the sin that the naked Kill of people have committed. The naked people in kill have committed. They poison the ground, foul the air, yeah? Pollute the air. You see that? Yes. And buried alive the mother who had given them birth. In some country it had been done like that. You know, right? And it's, it's a grave sin. In some country it had happened, yeah? I heard, I heard. So these persons have foreseen all this before our time even, yeah? Before the time that that happened, yeah? Okay. Because he sat in meditation and it has been revealed all this to him. Probably so that he can transmit this knowledge to other people so that they be more careful about how they treat the earth, né? And how they treat other co-inhabitants such as animals, and aquamarine's life, yeah? Okay, probably that's why he has seen it. It has been revealed to him, yes. But I saw not what befell them. He didn't see the judgment, because my vision changed. Probably it was so gruesome or something that uh, he's not allowed to see. Maybe it's too, too bad judgment or something, or so bad, I don't know what happened. The person did not see what happened to these sinners, yeah, naked sinners. But I saw not what befell them, I mean, what happened to them, how they were judged. He saw not that, because his vision changed. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Oh, probably the whole earth had been wiped out. Then. Because he see new heaven and new earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Correct. What I say is correct. See that? That's the end of that world that people have seen. The people who polluted the air, who uh, poisoned the ground by chemical and all that, yeah? a bomb, yeah, and who destroy the creatures of the land and the sea. That earth has been wiped out. I hope it's not ours, but it could be. The description here fit our planet, up to date, yeah? Fit uh, the behavior of uh, our planet, up to date. Okay, now continue with the next vision that he's seen. Those who made war shall beat their sword into plowshares. Hey, it happened right now. In uh, what country they they burn the gun and make it into Columbia. yeah Colombia in, into agriculture or some other instrument you know useful one yeah yeah oh wow so he saw all that thousand years ahead those who made war shall beat their sword their weapons yeah into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks pruning the trees and pruning vegetable and fruit. They make their spear, their weapon, into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Ah, peace. Wonderful. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Wow. I hope that will happen to our world. It's happening. It's slow, but it's happening. Huh? For the former things are passed away. I hope this is a vision of our planet, 
where nation don't wage war against nation anymore, when all the weapons be transformed into useful household items. Yes. And all the study about war will be no longer existing because that will pass away. Or well, it does happen nowadays, a little bit. I remember the Secretary of State of the United States suggests that the army should become the army of peace, shoulder of peace, go out and help civilians in trouble, help them to build up their life, help them in any way, you know? Soft approach, yeah, soft, soft army. That should be nice, yeah? Yeah, like the Salvation Army, hey? <laughs> the Salvation Army, it's just like an army, that's it. There's a major and a colonel and all that. It's fun. Yeah, I worked with them once in, uh, in Canada, anonymously, yeah? they didn't know my name. They just know my name, something like Celestia or something like that, yeah? But no, no, no real, <laughs> because they already know, because the journalists already been uh, chasing me everywhere and then forced me to say something about my name, so I just give one name that I can think of at that moment quick, you know? So they all know about that name, it's fine, because I, they wanted a piece of land nearby. I went there to give them clothes and all that for some winter at that time. Uh, and they wanted a piece of land nearby, you know, for a car park and building some more shelter for the homeless or something, and they couldn't afford it. It was not very expensive, actually. They have building already there, so I gave them the money that I didn't have at that time. <laughs> yeah, that's why I maxed my credit card at that time. I didn't know that I could not uh, spend forever. <laughs> But because I never had to use my credit card, you know. But although at that time it was Christmas and winter and many people need it. Some people have frostbite and have no money and all that, so I max my card, yeah. And when it comes to them, I max everything else. <laughs> I borrow everything else to give them the money because I don't want to give them credit card or check, you know, I don't want a name. So I want to give them cash. Everywhere I go, I pay cash, yeah. Therefore, I max my card, yeah? <laughs> and then uh, when I realized that there's no more available, I needed to buy airplane ticket to run away. <sighs> I'm telling you, I can't afford a, a big airplane, so I have to buy the, uh, pay for those uh, jumpy airplanes, you know, like uh, four-seaters or something. They jump from one island to the next. And what takes only six hours, it becomes 24 plus hours. It's a long journey. Yeah, at that time. But thank God, I'm done, I'm gone. <laughs> and we have to, I have to collect all my attendance car, which about 2,000, 1,500, here and there, everywhere, you know, we put it all together to pay for that airplane even. Because my uh, credit card, I, I give it a very big name, you know, the airplane, it doesn't matter, you know, because they don't know anyways. I say, oh, I give my credit card. I said, it's just charge it all on that, you know. I say a big, 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 a big statement, charge it all on that. I say, are you sure? I say, sure. <laughs> yeah. And then he called me back and said, you have only 2,000 left. <laughs> uh, 2,000? Are you kidding? <laughs> it's a platinum car. I said, yes, ma'am, there's only 2,000 left. What for I tell you this? I wanted to take it all, but I can't. Oh, I was so embarrassed, you know, big talk and small money. Oh. <laughs> so embarrassed, I'm sorry, sir, something must be wrong. I call my bank. But it's over, holiday, Christmas, who answer you? Huh? And it's talking in another language, you know, I normally never need it. And I couldn't speak that language at that time, so forget it. I had to borrow money for my <laughs> attendant. Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm sorry, can I borrow your car? <laughs> uh, anybody, anybody? <laughs> and they have very little money in their bank account, you know, 2000 1500 You know, what for they have money? They're with me. <laughs> my money is their money, <laughs> so they never had anything. <laughs> the attendant come with nothing. Most of them, you know, they come to Meoli, they don't have anything. And if they left uh, Meoli, I have to give them some money to start their life again with, yeah, all the time. The principle is that if you enter monkhood in Meoli, you know, community in Meoli is like a monkhood, you know, even we don't wear monk clothes anymore, uh, then you have to give up all your property, yeah, into the 
how say the public cast of our community so that we can uh, buy food or help people or anything. But it's just a theory, you know, <laughs> just a principle. <laughs> Nothing come in, <laughs> everything comes out. <laughs> what do you think? Why I have to work? Huh? I have to earn money. Beginning, we earn it just to sustain ourselves, the community, you know. And later on, we expand it more and more to help everybody else around the world. Yeah. Why do we talk about that? Huh? Ah, Salvation Army. Yeah, okay. It's really happening, yeah? That uh, the U.S. want to turn the, the fighting army into civilian heroes. I never know better idea than that. Huh? What a fantastic idea, no? Yes. We applaud them. Huh? We should. <laughs> Yeah, they should do that, yeah? <laughs> it's an idea, but it will come true, no? Yes. You have to have a dream, yeah? If you don't have a dream, how would you have a dream come true, right? It will come true, no? What do you say? It will. Yes. will. Yes, it will. And not just the United States, everybody else as well. Even Philippines now. There's a, the bill proposing that uh, all guns be banned from the whole country. So nobody even carry gun at all, even police or army, nobody. Yeah, it's a proposed bill, but we do pray that it come true, yeah? And not just Philippines, everywhere even. Yeah, it will come true, no? Yes, yes it will. Wonderful. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so now, you see? Neither shall they learn war anymore, for the former things are passed away. I mean, no more. No more learning about war. No more weapons. No more nation against other nations. That's the way we should live. Long, long time ago already. At least, huh? now we should start immediately. What kind of human that go out and kill another human? He looks exactly like you. How you take his life just like that, huh? Okay, so no more war is the best solution. Only peace, yeah? Yes. That's the way humans should live. Yes. And he spoke again. You know, the inner version, holy being spoke again. Because we skipped the, the before, so you don't know that, so. I want to tell you, this is a holy being inside that spoke again. Behold, I make all things new. Ah, that is a new earth and new heaven then. Yeah? I make all things new. I am Alpha and Omega. Who can that be? God. God, or the representative, or the Son of God. Yes. The beginning and the end. So it must be that I am God. I will give unto him... That is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Oh, the new heaven and new earth, everyone can have access to inner knowledge, yeah, of the water of life. That is Kuan Yin, yeah? It's the south inside. He that overcome shall inherit all things, overcoming the one who has practiced himself, yeah, who cultivate himself to become a perfect being. That being can inherit all things, the practitioners of the light and self. Yeah? You make yourself perfect and you inherit everything. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, the murderers and all liars shall dig their own pit, which burn with fire and brimstone. Hellfire. Huh? So only the one who cultivates himself into perfection with the fountain of life, that means the current, the south current, the one that nourishes all things, call it fountain of life, water of life, the melody of God, the voice of God, the word of God, this is him. Whoever cultivates that, we inherit all things. We have everything he wishes, has the whole universe. But who doesn't believe abominable murderer, killers, all that, and liars shall dig their own grave, which burn with fire and brimstone? 
That means you create your own hell. If you don't walk the way of heaven, you walk in the opposite direction. And you dig your own hell. You create it on your own hell and you'll be burned with it. Okay. This is it for now. Any questions? Good vision, huh? Some of you see this vision, and not in this retreat maybe, but other retreat, they told me. Similar, yeah. yeah. Okay, any question? Yes. You didn't sleep? Oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, I know, I know, I don't, I don't care. I know, even if you sleep, it's fine. That's why I tell her not to bother you. Yeah. She says she's not sleeping, she just... Uh, Keep looking at me, and then she enters Samaria. I say, yeah, I know it's so all. It doesn't matter. And leave you, even if you sleep, it's okay. Yeah? It's okay. Because you meditate all day, all night, and if you sleep here, hey, why not? You know, it doesn't matter. You come here to relax. I just want you to relax. Yeah? I don't impose anything upon you at this time. I say it's free. You know, there's time for meditation, but you don't have to sit there all the time. If you're tired, you go out, or you eat, or you drink, and you come back, whatever. Yeah? Okay, see you later. Okay, you may be free now, refreshing yourself, and then uh, relaxing and then eat, okay? Yes. There's no need to sit here for another half an hour. <laughs>